that Shakespeare just smacked hard. I'm waiting to see if they stay on it. Yep, he's on it. We'll leave this one here for now. I literally just put it out there. It hasn't even been in the water for a minute. I'm trying to pull him up. Big blue. about 15 inches what's up everybody all right here's a quick video for surf fishing uh, before I start off I'll just tell you right now it's a beginner's video if you have a ton of experience uh, or you're even like a pretty well familiar with it the video is not gonna help you so I uh, just want to be honest up front and tell you this is more for somebody that's getting into surf fishing or maybe someone that uh, is visiting somewhere on vacation and they want to try it. So uh, for me, I live right outside of Ocean City. I do all my surf fishing on Assateague Island National Seashore. I don't really do it too much on the beach in Ocean City just because of uh, the way the Assateague is set up. It's, it's much better for surf fishing. But um, this, these uh, things could apply for anybody anywhere uh, that wants to get into it and wants to, to surf fish. So uh, I'm going to get started. I'm going to go over a couple of things, your rigs, your rod, uh, typical bait to use. Um, and then from there, uh, I'll get into like a little bit more equipment, weights and stuff like that. And then at the very end, uh, I'll show you footage from the beach of where I fish. And it'll also have an aerial view and kind of help you out to show you where to cast and what to do when you're out there fishing. So, all right, I'm going to get started. I'm going to go on uh, rigs first and then we'll jump in from there. So, uh, the first rig that I'm going to go over, which is one of the more common ones that I see all the time is a fish finder. So here's my leader right here and goes to my hook right here okay so it's a hook i have it attached to a uh, little swivel and then my weight goes up to my main line right here and the weight you can use the slider if you want some people attach the slider on there and hook the the weight on right here it slides up and down um, i don't i just leave it right on the line i use uh 50 pound line so uh, it's pretty tight um, but pretty much all it's going to do is the weight is going to hit the, the ocean and then it's just going to slide back and forth so there's no tension on here um, which is good for the fish because they'll eat it and then they'll swim away with it uh, the second one that i use a lot is a high low rig some people call it a, a double drop or a two tier or I've, I've heard all types of different names so it's basically it's this right here so i have it attached right here to a swivel and it runs down to a dropper loop with my first hook then it runs down some more to my weight and i want to do it i'll show you the whole thing it's another dropper loop that comes off with the weight at the bottom so it's a it's it's two two hooks uh, there's one here and there's one here and then my weight at the bottom so when it sits at the bottom it's pretty tight and hooks just kind of dangle and hope a fish eats it um, maryland law i am only allowed to have two hooks i can't have more than two hooks so um, for us this is is very very common uh, for most fish uh, we use all types of different bait uh, just like you can too. Um, just research what you're looking to catch and what they eat. Uh, there is universal baits that pretty much everybody uses. Uh, clams, squid, uh, things like that. But uh, for the most part, just, just see what you're, you're trying to get. Sorry, there's a woodpecker going nuts. He's been kind of hanging around the last couple days. Um, but as far as bait goes, uh, the fresher the better. You, you got to look at it as if uh, if you won't eat it, the fish aren't going to eat it either. They need fresh bait. So we, whether it's like shrimp from the grocery store, um, fresh fish that you catch, croaker, uh, spot, bluefish or what we use. Uh, there's all types of stuff, but it's got to be fresh. Make sure it's fresh. That's the most important thing. Bait is very important. Other people also use fish bites. Uh, I think there's another one like fish gum or something like that. Um, 
a couple of people on YouTube also sell different types of bait, but uh, for us, fish bites are, are the most common. Um, they can be a little expensive. I think this bag was $9. But I just cut them up into little pieces and then put them on the hook and uh, they stay on the hook for a while. And they do, they do work, they do work well. Um, sometimes I'll pair it up with uh, cut bait and then put a piece of this on there. And uh, yeah, it seems to work just fine. Uh, gotcha plugs are always really good. Um, this pack is about 12 bucks. Uh, these are pretty much anything that's aggressive. Um, bluefish, Spanish mackerel, things like that. We'll go after these. Uh, same with these two. Uh, this is just a regular casting spoon. Um, I have this little guy that does pretty well. Uh, I think it's also made by Sea Striker. Uh, and then these diamond jigs too. Uh, kind of flash and flutter around. They do, do pretty well too. So next I'm going to get into just some of the other equipment that I carry with me. Uh, obviously a bucket and I have my fish grips and I have a pair of scissors. What I'm not showing I don't have is a, a bait knife. But I do have a bait knife too. Uh, those are the tools that I use the most. Um, scissors I use for cutting all my bait. Uh, the bait knife I use for uh, anything from uh, bleeding out the fish to if I have to cut like uh, a bunker that's like pretty thick and bony. I use a bait knife. It's much easier than the scissors. So sand spikes. I'll get into these. There's uh, two two different styles that you can really do. Um, they have the short ones and they obviously have the really long ones. Uh, the short ones, you can buy these at stores. They're really not that much. This one was $6 when I got it. I don't really use it too much. Actually, I hardly use it at all. I always use these. And as you can see, I've got a, a bunch of them in there. So why I use the tall ones, all right? Uh, the tall ones I want the, the line as far out of the water as I can beyond the breakers because if it's if the line is sitting in the breakers it's just going to smash the line back and forth and it's going to throw the bait off so I want it sticking as far up as I can um, I'll show you footage more of, of at the very end when I go over all the where to cast and all that but um, if the waves are really small this is perfectly fine if the waves are really big this is fine uh, for me, it's easier to use these. It's actually more cost effective too. I buy them in 10 foot sections. I just cut it in half so it's five feet. And then I cut a, a point into the bottom and just hammer it right into the sand. And that's it. So that's what I use the most. Uh, you can use that. It's just these are a lot easier to use. Now I'll get into weights. The, there's tons and tons and tons of different weights. Um, the two weights that I suggest, well actually the only one that I really suggest the most is uh, weights like these pyramids. Pyramids are always the best. We never use Carolina rigs or knocker rigs just because the egg sinker kind of like washes down the beach. Um, we're looking for things to stay planted in the surf. Uh, some people use these Sputnik sinkers. These are uh, very very heavy and they'll stick into the surf and they're sometimes they're really hard to get out you really have to pull uh, i try not to use these unless the surf is really bad if it is and i have to use it i will uh, for the most part i'm going to use either a four ounce uh, pyramid or a six ounce um, i don't really go over that if i go over that it's probably too rough um, in ocean city where a lot of people come down and fish on vacation uh, you can even get away with the two ounce out there uh, some some days the ocean's just not not too bad some days it is so just depends on the day uh, as far as hooks go i only use circle hooks circle hooks if you're not familiar it has that little point that comes in right here so when the fish grabs onto it and he bites and he swims away he's going to hook himself so you're not setting the hook the hook will set itself in the by the fish so it makes it uh, a million times easier i highly suggest circle hooks i use twos fours sixes and eight aughts um and the two that i use the most are actually fours and the sixes eights if i'm going after large like striped bass or twos if i'm going after croaker or um kingfish or anything like that so 
And those are the hooks that I use. I really highly suggest them. Uh, the circle hooks, they're definitely the easiest to use. As you can see, I have them set up on mine. Here's one, here's another one, and here's another one. So absolutely, definitely recommend circle hooks. As far as rods go, you can use any rod you want. Uh, I've used the majority of my rods in the ocean. Uh, I've even used my little uh, pen pursuit. Um, I mean, it's got, it's, what, 2500 series reel. I've used uh, the 5000 series reels. Uh, for the most part, if I'm catching like flounder and all that, um, my 3000 series reels are, are just good enough. Um, but mainly the two that I'm using, uh, if I'm looking to cast far and to keep keep weights out there and to keep my bait out there, are the 10 foot rods. Uh, those for me have always worked the best. Some people use 15s and they really try to sling them out. Um, I'll get into that later though, of why that's not a good idea. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, that's uh, just basic, basic seven foot rods, or you can go up to 10 foot. Uh, the 10 foot for me are the ones I leave out there I'll cast them and leave them out there. And then the uh, uh, seven foot rods, I'll, I'll kind of work along the beach a little bit, see if I can catch flounder or anything else hanging around in there. All right, so you got all the equipment down, you got the rods, the surf spikes, the weights, the hooks, the bait, uh, pretty much ready to go. So uh, now I'll go over where to cast. This is the most important bait and where to cast are the most important. Like I said, fresh bait. You have to have fresh bait. Uh, they're not gonna eat the stinky, smelly stuff unless you're going for sharks, but uh, for the most part, they're not gonna eat it. You have to use fresh bait. So uh, this is the next most important thing. I'll show you where to cast so you can uh, learn how to read the beach a little bit and it'll, it'll help you out. So when you're out in the ocean and you're on the beach trying to fish, you're looking for, for features, right? Structure because the ocean doesn't have any structure out here. The waves will tell you where the sandbars are because the sandbar is the structure. So the fish are in the sandbars, hiding around them, going back and forth between them. So I'll go over how to read the, the sandbars and where they are and show you where to cast. All right, so check it out. Here's what I'm talking about with the waves and how I would do it, okay? So at, I'm on Assateague Island. The waves out here and the sandbars out here are a little bit bigger than, uh, than what you would find inside Ocean City. So you can see multiple white caps, the bigger ones in the, in the background, but you'll notice right in the middle, it doesn't connect all the way across. So you know that there's a hole there. So what you're looking for is gaps in between the wave sets, and that's where you want to cast. The waves will tell you everything that you need to know. You just have to watch them 